Lord was speaking to me through worship. I'm starting to get more and more through worship. He's talking to me more in worship. And what he told me was, he said, and he's told me this before. He told me this quite some time ago, and it's all about you. And he said, Belinda, they're my precious diamonds. They're precious diamonds. And he said, I want you to, I want you to equip them. We welcome everybody that's on board with us uh, outside of Eagle's Nest Watch, but you're watching. Thank you for joining us today. But he said that each one of you are diamonds because this goes for you as well, whether you're sitting here or whether you're sitting at home, that you're a precious diamond. And he said, I want you to, I want you to equip them and to position them, train them. And he said, I want you so that they can be mounted and so that they will be seen in a mounting. Diamond's beautiful, but when it's put into a mounting, it's seen and appreciated. And he said, they reflect who I am. Well, today he says, remember I told you they were diamonds? And I said, yes. And he said, I told you to equip them so that they can be mounted. And I said, yes. And he said, well, the, he said, the worship, and he said, the teaching that, that's been here, he said, it's hard teaching. And it's his teaching, it's not Berlinda, it's his. He said, it hardens them. It makes them so hard that they can't be crushed by the enemy. He said it helps to position them on that mounting. He said it's part of it, the worship and the training. He said it's the fine filigree that's in the gold that they sit in. And he said that some of the training is some of the other little diamonds that surround that main diamond. And he said, so they are, they are getting mounted he said that when you go through the activations, the supernatural activations, which employ the seven spirits of God, he said, that's part of the mounting. And I listened, I'm listening. I thought, wow. He said, this is part of the mounting that helps to display them so that they will be seen and they will reflect my glory, the beauty and the hardness. So Father, I thank you that today, here we are. You're ready to give us more gifts. You're ready to define, if you will, more about that mounting and preparing them. Father, I thank you that you're giving us new mantles, new anointings. And we're watching those mantles, we're watching them manifest on people. And that's so encouraging to watch the anointings that you're giving them. We're seeing them manifest. And Father, we're, we're trying to provide a place a platform so those mantles can be used. So Father, today we stand in need of some new mantles. I thank you that you want to give us new mantles. So Father, right now we are ready. We stand ready to receive your new mantles. Some of you are going to receive a mantle of silver. Silver. Some of you get a mantle of silver. And so, Father, we thank you for the new mantles that you're giving out today. Now, in the name of Jesus. As what's on this worship, it's the breath of God, the winds of God blowing. Thank you, Rita. So appropriate. So Father, we thank you that the winds have changed and folks, listen to me very deeply. 
the winds of change are blowing. I know that they've been blowing in the past, but I'm telling you, they're blowing stronger and you're gonna start seeing some things change around you. And it is the winds of change. So Father, we don't fight the winds of change. We move, we, we push into them. Father, you blew life into Adam, so blow life into us. Some of us really need a new breath of life in us. We need new energy, we need healing, we need restoration. So Father, we breathe in. We receive as you blow into us your breath, your breath of life and strength and energy and creativity. Thank you. Now, Lord, we call in the four winds of God to blow off of us all the stuff that the devil's put on us. Four winds come, come and converge and blow off of us the junk that the enemy's put on us. Now, Father, we see things shaking around us. We know that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. This is the fear of the Lord. We're studying the fear of the Lord and we want the fear of the Lord. Father, shake us good. We surrender to you right now and we give you permission to come and to shake us good. The fear of the Lord to shake us out of the dull drums. That's the word I heard, the dull drums of where, what the enemy has put on us and where we've been. Some of it is where we've allowed ourselves to be. And so shake that off of us. Shake off some of the worry and the fear, the anxieties that have tried to put heavy weights on us. So shake it off of us now and shake us good. Let us feel the trembling of the fear of the Lord within us. <laughs> Give us the fear of the Lord, the trembling and the shaking. Many people are experiencing serious shaking in their lives. Things that they thought no one could touch, God has not only touched, but removed. And so, Father, we stand before you. We surrender. Shake us. Father, we're your brides. We want more oil. We're those virgins out there. And we want more oil, so give us more oil. Let your oil cover us and let it protect us. Not only does it protect us, the Lord says it flavors us. I love this. I absolutely love this. He said it not only coats you, but it, it flavors you. And so, Father, we thank you that your oil from heaven, your holy oil from heaven is covering us. Not only is it covering us, but it's flavoring us as well. When you cook food and you cook it in a particular oil, it'll take on that flavor. And so, Father, I thank you that it's a heavenly oil, so we are going to be flavored with heaven. virgins want their oil for our lamps. Let us give off a heavenly light. <laughs> you cannot write this stuff. This is the manifested presence of the Lord, folks. This is the manifested presence of the Lord. Holy Spirit, Jesus, they're all here. They're all moving. This is manifested, and we allow them to move. We welcome it. We're not going to fight it. We're not going to tell you to leave. Now, 
Now, Father, send down the fire that burns out all that junk, goes down into those deep places and we've protected them. But now we say we surrender, burn it out of us. Father, we want new fire. We want fresh fire from heaven that gives us a zeal for your word, for your presence, for your love, for just everything about you. We want a fresh fire. We want a baptism of fire. Just like that oil baptizes us, well, let your fire baptize us as well. That's what we're going for. We want an encounter with you, and we want to be baptized with your holy fire. I've had that one time in my life, and I want another. I'm not shy about it. I want another. Because I changed dramatically after that. Thank you. Now, Holy Spirit, we give you, we give you the full reign here to move among us. If you have a need, regardless if it's physical, spiritual, or emotional, telling what your need is. Move among us and touch what it is people need. This is the spirit of counsel and might. That's what I prayed over that lady yesterday. It was the spirit of might that that would come and produce a new leg for her. And we thank you, Father, for that. Now, Father, everybody here is a special key. And folks, I believe God's putting up some very special gates for everybody. I think you've been through some doors and you've been through some gates, but there's some special gates that are coming up. And I thank you, God, that each one here is a special key that will open that special gate that only they can open. We surrender to you so you put us in there and turn us. Maybe uncomfortable, maybe inconvenient for us, may not be at the time we want it to be. And again, it may cost us some relationships, but we're willing to pay that price so that we can open up that gate. There are some gates and doors that we need to lock, and only our key will lock them to the enemy. So right now, we avail ourselves to lock those doors and those gates. Fear and anxiety, trouble. The enemy's out there trying to breathe fear into us and on us, trying to get us to lose our faith. We're not going to allow that one bit. We shut the door to that. Thank you, in Jesus' name. There are some people that God's calling you to close some gates. And it's going to cause some re, uh, re, some relationships. But folks, those people, the Lord says those people are drinking wine, old wine. He said it may be good, but it's old wine. He said, but I've called you to drink fresh new wine. He said, because what you need, you're going to need the fresh wine. He said, there's a sweetness to the new wine that you've never tasted before. But he said, you're going to love it. You're going to get addicted to that new wine, and you're going to want it. Nothing else, nothing else is going to satisfy you. He said, when I come to you and I offer you that new wine, he says, you drink it. He says, you drink that new wine I'm going to offer you. So it's very robust. He said, not only 
will your spirit benefit, but your body will benefit from that new wine as well. He said, your body's going to respond to the glory that's connected and as a part of this. Your body's going to respond to this. And you're going to be younger than what you think you are. Your body's going to be younger than what you think. He said, I don't care what your numbers say. He said, how do you think Caleb took Mount Hor back? How do you think he fought all those giants? He was 80 plus. That's because he had the new wine and he had a new body. He had the energy, he had the strength of a much younger man. He drank the new wine God offered him. So Father, we thank you for what you're giving us today. We don't take it for granted. We hold on to it, Father. We treasure it. And we're not ashamed to tell other people about it because you want to give them new wine as well. So we give you all the honor and all the glory. Father, let your kingdom come on earth. And Father, we thank you they are, that we are part of the reformation of the United States of America. We are a part of it. Help us to be faithful in that and help us to be humble and meek and loving through that as well. May the fear of the Lord overshadow us. May we abide in the shadow of the fear of the Lord. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In the sovereign name of King Jesus, I pray, amen. Has anybody got anything they want to share? I have two things. Uh, the first one is um, that song um, when he says everything's changed and it's getting harder to recognize, you know, the person I was before I accepted Christ. And, you know, we're not supposed to walk like, like we used to or talk like we used to. We're changed from the inside out. So let that minister to you. The second thing is um, I smelled this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful smell, and I just kept inhaling it. And I said, God, what is that fragrance? I can't recognize that fragrance. And he said, it's the fragrance of my holiness. Oh. Praise God. Before you said anything about mantles, I thought that's probably the first thing you would talk about. But I saw a mantle, kind of a, an arched piece of cloth, I thought, and it was white. When you're talking about silver, I thought, well, maybe this is a different thing. But it came and hit my forehead and then draped behind my ears. And he said, this is truth. Praise God, that's awesome. Well, I saw, I saw this mountain and uh, there was people back behind me and we were climbing this straight place up higher on the mountain 
and the wind was howling and it, the wind was blowing and I turned around and I said don't give up come on come on we can make it we can make it and it was part of us and we just kept moving this narrow place and we kept moving up higher and higher but we was encouraging each other up that mountain Good. Thank you. when you were doing the mantle thing I saw this beautiful black female angel and she was gathering up these mantles and she motioned to Ernie and she said come on and she motioned to me and said come on and she took them back and she put them in a washing machine say that again she took the mantles she took us back there and she put the mantles in a washing machine really okay thank you okay anybody else good I felt a lot of wind uh, blowing on my back and just it kept blowing and I kept thinking is that air conditioner on but it wasn't it wasn't yeah. running at the moment but uh, I felt a lot of wind good and then Rita was talking about a fragrance and I didn't smell anything but that scripture about let the fragrance of Christ yeah. everywhere I go yeah. help us take that fragrance with us ran through my head That's good. That's <laughs> and so I prayed that good and then um, good. this is what I heard come come into my presence you are welcome here at my feet you are near and dear to me, my children. I love you and I am pleased with your worship and acknowledgement of me. Do not fear my presence as long as you are covered by the blood of my son, you may enter into the joy of the Lord. Look not and say not, I am not worthy because the blood has made you worthy. So come enter in and enjoy my presence. Thank you, that's good. That's excellent, thank you. when you were first talking here recently a pyre okay <laughs> when you were first talking here recently the lord had me in the, in the uh book of psalms of solomon all the way from the beginning to the end and really laying it out and i've been going around teaching it different places but the whole thing is, is that it, 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 everything you were saying was going right along with that because it was going up to the mountains going to the higher places getting secluded with him getting yeah. shut away with him and there's one place in there like in, in the new new bible talks about a place that nobody else can go you know and god has taken us into different places where only we can go yeah and then i i, I believe he's been telling me about the fruit and he's going to let us taste the new fruits you know it's uh the, and i'm not saying different than the fruits of the spirit but i'm saying that there's it's, i felt like god was saying there's more that we have never tasted you know mm -hmm. we, we don't go to every nation and everything there's more than we haven't tasted and who knows what he's got created out there and for the future for yeah. us and so that goes right along with the 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 book of all you've been teaching about yeah about the fear of the lord because the last couple of days i went through some really struggles you know in the uh, uh a spirit of heaviness come over me so yeah. heavy yeah. but i had people i called yeah and they went into prayer for me and started lifting right away good and that's kind of the reason why I'm really down here today because okay. yesterday I don't think I could go down but yesterday I did forget about what was going to happen Saturday and uh, I know I didn't make it but I apologize for that that's all right, that's uh, all right. so anyway and, and another thing I want to give a report on the Lord because I in next month I go in and I had this growth up here yeah and you can see there's hardly anything there anymore yeah and then my lip had one big enough for like a racer or a pencil yeah. And that's just totally gone. Almost, yeah, you know, praise just, God. Heal. And so God's healing, God's whether it's healing. just an instantaneous thing that you see yeah. or whether it takes a few days. Yeah. But, but going, one was a basal cell and the other one was more serious. They both look like to me they're pretty well gone. All, I, yeah. I know they're gone, really, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's just a, Praise God. Amen. Prayers are answered, aren't amen. they? Amen. Good. 
good news. Anybody else got anything to share? I hear a voice. Oh, you. Inside. Okay. I never felt that before. Yes. The trembling. Yes, good. The trembling. Yes. That's the fear of the Lord. It's true. That's a good thing. I think for it's all over with, we're all going to be trembling which is a good thing. It's not a religious thing, and it's not one of those brag, braggadocious things. It's, it's really uh, the truth. So uh, the Lord did tell me that he's told me before that you're all diamonds. And he says, I want you to take care of those diamonds. He says, they're very precious to me. And he said, uh, but today he said, all the training and the worship, he said, that's the part of the mounting that presents you so that you can be seen. And he said, even the uh, seven spirits of God, the activations, he says, that's part of, you get things that helps God to present you as a precious diamond and, and a mounting that others can see. So I want you just to know he, he really values you as a diamond and he's mounting you so that others can see you. And you know as well as I do, I mean, especially women, when they get a new diamond ring, they like for people to look at it. Well, he's the same way. He's the very same way. He wants people to see you on his hand, if you will. I'm being really serious. That's what he was talking to me about. Anybody else? Ernest. Yeah. Okay, we're back in Proverbs. Flipping right through this, I think we're at 20. And again, the Lord told me just to read it into your hearing with little or no comment. And uh, this is the New King James Version. Verse 1, Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The wrath of a king is like the roaring of a lion. <clears throat> whoever provokes him to anger sins against his own life. <clears throat> it is honorable for a man to stop striving, since any fool can start a quarrel. The lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? Verse 7. The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. A king who sits on the throne of judgment scatters all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. Diverse weights and diverse measures, they are both alike an abomination to God. Even a child is known by his deeds, whether what he does is pure and right. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made them both. Do not love sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied with bread. 
It is a good thing, cries the buyer, but when he has gone away, then he boasts. Oh, I've misread that. Verse 11. It is good for nothing, cries the buyer, but when he goes away, then he boasts. What a deal I got. Verse 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Take the garment of one who is surety for a stranger and hold it as pledge when it is for a seductress. Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel. Plans are established by counsel, by wise counsel wage war. He who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with his lips. Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. An inheritance gained hastily at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. Do not say, I will recompense evil. Wait for the Lord and he will save you. Diverse weights are an abomination to the Lord and dishonest scales are not good. A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? It is a snare for a man to devote rashly something as holy and afterward reconsider his vows. A wise king sifts out the wicked and brings the threshing wheel over them. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and by loving kindness he upholds his throne. Verse 29, the glory of young men is their strength, and the splendor of old men is their gray head. It's good news. <laughs> and verse 30, the last one in Proverbs 20, Blows that hurt cleanse away evil, as do stripes the inner depths of the heart. End of Proverbs 20. Okay, thank you. Well, we're going to end Ezekiel's book today, and it's a good ending, because this one teaches about God coming back to earth in his temple. This is a good one. Doreen shared with me, she had, uh, she's got some information on what the temple looked like. It's absolutely beautiful. Then Pam showed me out of a Bible that she has some dimensions, so um, I would advise you to talk to them. They can show you what the information they've got, because uh, I really believe that we're, we're going to be a part of that. I mean, it's looking like we're going to be a part of that, to be quite honest with you. So might as well know what it looks like before you get there. Okay.
Ezekiel 8, the date is 2524. We're in the last chapters of Ezekiel. Yahweh returns to his temple. The shining man led Ezekiel to the gate uh, facing the east. I saw the glory of God of Israel strong from the east with a roar. So what he's saying is he's coming back the very way that he left. He's coming right back this very same way. There was a thunderous sound and the ground was glowing brightly, illuminated by his glorious presence. So when he comes back, this is not a quiet deal. Everybody's going to know what's going on. There was a thunderous sound, and the ground was glowing brightly. In other words, the ground itself is reflecting his glory. This was like uh, the one he saw when he came to destroy the city, and like these visions he had had at the river Chabar. In other words, he's seen the very same thing. It's a different context, if you will. Uh, and it's not like he saw completely something different. He, they coincide, they affirm each other. He fell face down to the ground. Yahweh entered the temple through the eastern gate. I doubt that we would be able to stand either. I was having problems standing up here in the presence of God, and I'm not trying to be religious with you or anything, but when his presence is there, it's hard to stand up. And so he falls face down to the ground. Then Yahweh enters the temple through the eastern gate. So the shining man has shown him the temple, all the dimensions of it. Now God himself is coming back to enter into that temple. And he's going to stay there. Yahweh's spirit left him and to lifted him into the air and set me down in the inner courtroom. In other words... He has brought him right into the courtroom of the temple. He watched the glory of Yahweh like a cloud fill the temple. The promise of the renewal of worship reserved exclusively for the priestly ministry of the Zedekites. And so they have worship there, and this is the priestly ministry. The promise of the renewed Renewal of worship. So God's bringing his worship back into the temple as well. So we're hearing, seeing, and feeling. He's hearing, seeing, and feeling. He hears a voice speaking to him inside the temple. He hears a voice speaking to him inside the temple. It says, this is the place of my throne the place on which I will rest my feet. Now, don't you think that's interesting that he said, I'm going to rest my feet there? God's interested in resting his feet. He said, this is my throne. He's going to rule and reign there, is what he's saying. That's the place where he rules and reigns. He said, the place... Uh, of my throne, the place on which I will rest my feet, where I will live among the Israelites forever. Now then, he's going to live among the Israelites. That means us too, to be quite honest with you. That's us included. Yahweh says the people and their kings will never again drag my holy name through the mud. What's he saying there? He said, I'm not going to tolerate it. He said, they're not, going to, they're not going to mock me. They're not going to make fun of me. They're not going to uh, do the, the horrible things that they have done, the sinful and evil things they have done. He said, they're not going to do that. The Lord says, in his anger, I put an end to them. That pretty well puts it in its place, doesn't it? He says it all. I put an end to them. There are a lot of people out there saying a lot of things. 
and they think they can say what they want to say. They think they can get by with it. But folks, nobody gets by with sin. Nobody gets by with sin. There's only one way to be forgiven, that's by the blood of Jesus. But he knows what's going on, and he's going to attend to business, and it's his business. That's, that's pretty, I don't want to say frightening, but it's very... This puts the fear of the Lord in you when he's taking care of his business. The Lord says, in his anger, in his anger, he's angry. I put an end to them. Now they must put away their unfaithfulness of worshiping other gods and put away the corpses of their kings from my presence. So they had kings that they worshiped. And there's times when we've done the same thing. We have leaders that we worship. We even have spiritual leaders that we worship and we put them on a pedestal and we cannot do that. I had a lady up in Edwardsville. She said, Brilinda, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay, so I listened to her. And she was telling me what was going on. And what was happening was she had put the pastors on a pedestal. And she just thought they were beyond, you know, beyond rules or anything. And all of a sudden, things are starting to cave in on her. And she's trying to figure it out. What's wrong? And I said, the Lord told me you have put them on a pedestal. He's a jealous God, and he's not going to allow you to do that, so he's knocking them off of their pedestal. If there's somebody you really love and you revere, you will be honest with them in love and tell them what's going on. If you don't, God's going to be obligated to deal with them. And he will deal with them. Most of the world does not perceive that as love. And I've got a similar situation going in my life with somebody. And I've had to confront somebody with a sin that they're in. I didn't do it in anger, didn't, I did it in love. But people fail, and probably that individual fails to realize that I love that person and that I'm willing to lay down my life, my reputation, my ministry. I'm willing to lay people's approval of me, friendship. I've lost friendships over this because I've said this is sin. But it's because I truly love that person, and I don't want to see them proceed on, and it's a sin, too, and I'm not making it up. There are times in the near future when you are going to be faced with the very same situation. There's going to be sin out there. And in love, you're going to have to tell people that that is sin. That's, that's not what they think it is. They're being deceived. And it may not go over real well. But you've got to be prepared. Your leaders... Your leaders. And so if you're going to lead people, if you're going to help disciple people, you've got to be able to tell them in love that what they're doing is not right. It's not of God. It is a sin. It's of the devil. And be ready for the consequences. So it said, uh, worshiping other gods and put away the corpses of their kings from my presence and I will make my home with them forever. I will make my home with them forever. When you get it set out right, guess what? He's going to make his home with you forever. His presence will be with you forever. Now I'm going to say this, and I'll tell, say it from experience. It may take a while for it to happen, but it will happen. Yahweh tells Ezekiel to tell the people the details of the temple. So he tells him, I want you to share all this. 
They should study, now listen to this, they should study the perfect structure of the temple. They should study this. Now, I haven't done that yet. I've got to do that. And Doreen and, and Pam have shared some structures there that I need to dig in and look at and study. Then, if, if they truly express sorrow over their sins, sketch, sketch it out for them so that they'll understand. So he told him to draw it up for him, which I'm sure he did. But he says, if they truly express sorrow over their sins. Now, folks, when people are in sin, they need to be sorrowful for what they've done. They don't think that they just flippantly say, well, you know, I'm forgiven by the blood of Jesus and flip on and go on. Folks, people need to be sorry for what they've done. They need to repent and they need to be sorry. They need to be sorrowful. That's the difference. And I'm telling you, with a spirit of knowledge, you will know. God will show you their heart, that they're either really sorry or they're not. Ernie had on this show last night of this, uh, it's one of those crime shows, you know, that they take somebody, they prove that they did whatever. And this uh, young girl, she was a girl, She'd had a baby, and her parents didn't know she'd had the baby, and the debate is whether she killed it or not. But she buried it. Something happened, the baby died, and she buried that baby in the backyard, and nobody knew it. And I forgot how they found this out, but they found it out, and they, you know, they're interviewing her. When they went to trial, the prosecutor said, they showed texts that she had sent to her boyfriend and something else, somebody else. And she said, uh, my stomach's much better now and I'm real happy. She was no more sorry about that baby dying than a man in the moon. She was happy and relieved that it was out away from her and she's going on with her life. She was not sorrowful that her baby died. The prosecutor said she never looked at baby things. She never went to the doctor. She, she, she had no, absolutely no interest in this baby whatsoever. And she, they said she killed it. They're not sure how she killed it, but she killed it. And then she buried it in the backyard. He continues explaining the burning sacrifices, dedication of the altar. This goes through a whole chapter. The shiny man brought him back to the outer gate to the sanctuary. And again, he believes that they believe that the shiny man is Jesus. So he brings him back to the outer gate to the sanctuary. The gate must be kept closed. Now, you know, I've got these signs all over. It says, keep, keep the gate closed. Keep the gate closed. We got to learn how to keep our gates closed. Don't let the enemy in. So here in the heavenly temple, God's temple on earth, the gate must be kept closed. He told the rulers... Oh, he told the rules of admission to the temple. So now we've got some rules that have to be obeyed in order to get inside. So this is just not come in as you want. There's rules for this. Rules that have to be obeyed. He's told about the laws and instructions about the temple and the Levites. So we got Levites, we got priests in there. So not everybody's just going to be able to walk into the temple. Yahweh says, no Gentile uncircumcised in heart. No Gentile circumcised, uncircumcised in heart. 
We're not talking about a physical circumcise. We're talking about their heart being circumcised by him. That kind of clears out the crowd, doesn't it? In heart, it says, and body may enter my sanctuary, even the foreigners living among the Israelites. For the Levites who abandoned me when I when Israel turned their <clears throat> their bodies or turned their self uh, on me to worship their false gods must bear the consequences of their own sin. All right. So what he's saying now is there were Israelite priests, Levites that abandoned God and they worshiped other gods and there is a consequence that they're going to have to pay. Jesus paid our price. We have to ask forgiveness. He has to be the Lord of our life. This is not a get out of jail free card and then go back and do what you want to do. There was a man in Cambria. My mother lived, my mom, my mom and dad lived the uh, a, car, a house off of the main street and we had a swing and she and I would swing and talk a lot and there was this one man the uh, apostolic church was down in the next block and there was this one man that would walk to church after a few years I said mother why we didn't see him last year but now this year he's walking down there again what's going on hey, I'm a kid my mom said, Verlinda, when he's with God, when, he, when he's with God, he goes to church and you see him walking, but when he's out in sin, he don't go. I said, oh. That says something, doesn't it? It says something. He said that, that they, they must bear the consequences of their own sin. And so we want to remain sinless, don't we? We want to remain sinless. They will serve him as temple gatekeepers and temple servants. So here we got gatekeepers. We've got watchmen and we got gatekeepers. Rules for the priests. The sons of Zadok, who, who's faithful, who faithfully served in his sanctuary, will serve him and they will enter his sanctuary and approach his table to minister to him and oversee the temple worship. He talks about their apparel while serving. So he goes into a big long spill talking about what they're gonna wear. So I'm, I, you know, I don't know the answer to this question, but according to the book of Ezekiel, it's gonna be the sons of Zadok. And during this time, they're gonna, I mean, he's gonna say who they are, that they are going to be serving him. They, fa they were faithful, their ancestors were faithful, and because their ancestors were faithful, then they are going to be, they're going to have the opportunity to do that. That's why these generational sins and curses have to be dealt with, and they have to be broken, so that we can serve appropriately, if you will. They can't shave their heads, these are the priests, they can't shave their heads, nor let their hair grow long. Kind of put, gets that in place, doesn't it? Uh, it made me wonder, you know, about the Nazarites. I thought, okay, I guess they have to cut their hair. But keep it trimmed. They cannot drink wine before they enter the court. They cannot marry a widow or a divorced woman, only an Israelite virgin. They can marry a widow of a priest. So when they get married, the woman's got to be a, a virgin or she can be the widow of a priest. So when they get married, that's the rules. They will teach the people the difference between what is holy and what is ordinary, what is ritually clean for God's service. All right, are we clean for God's service? We need to ask ourselves, 
Have we cleaned ourselves up spiritually? Have we repented? Have we walked away from sin and stayed away from it? There's a lot of people out there, folks, that are going to churches or going to meetings that they're fully involved in sin, yet they're going to church. They're not clean. God knows it. God's got to get it cleaned up, and he will. They must follow his instructions and regulations for all my appointed feasts and honor my holy Sabbath, Daryl. Thank God for Daryl that brought that to this house and taught on it. This is coming back into place. And I really feel that that's why Daryl was led to come and to offer that to us. And those of us that, that came for that teaching took it because we are preparing for that temple. Now that's not to say, thank you, Daryl, for bringing that. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. I love this. All along, God's been preparing us at every step. It would, you know, I was praying. I, I had that desire. God had put that desire for that to be taught here. And when Daryl walked in that door and said, are you ready to, he wanted to teach. He was available if we wanted him. I jumped at that like a blind dog in a meat locker now. I did. I wanted him to come because I knew that this was God, and I knew God was getting us ready. Bless you. God's getting us ready. So here we are studying Ezekiel several months past. We finished that teaching, which we absolutely loved, and it's all out there on YouTube. It's out on YouTube. You don't have an excuse. They must follow his instructions and regulations for all, all my appointed feasts and honor my holy Sabbaths. We're getting back into it. I, I love it. We're ready. He cannot be near a dead person. If it's his father, mother, son, daughter, brother, or unmarried sister, he may defile himself. In other words, he may go to the funeral. Yahweh will be their sole inheritance. This is the priest. We're talking about the priest. Yahweh will be their sole inheritance. They are not to be given anything. They will eat the grain and uh, guilt offerings, the best fruits and flour. They must not eat any bird or animal that has died a natural death or killed by an animal. Now, some people think this is not too important to hear about being taught. But if he put it in there, I think it's important that we know that. Chapter 45, Yahweh tells about sacred uh, arrangements, then tells uh, about the rules for the rulers. So it sounds like we're going to have some rulers running around. I may be looking at some of the rulers right now. You're being trained, people, for the future. You're being trained to do things in this new world, this new atmosphere, this new culture, this when God comes back. You may be ruler over something. He tells about the rules for the rulers. He tells the rulers that they have overstepped their bounds. Now, we're talking about the rulers that was presently during this, well, no, 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 let me back it up. There are people that have ruled that have ruled unrighteously. And there were rulers back then, and we know that there's rulers today that have overstepped their bounds to stop their violence and oppression and practice justice and righteousness. Now then, I'm willing to say that if they don't do that, they probably won't be around very long. They won't make it. 
he tells about worship offerings. The Feast of the Passover and Feast of Tabernacles. This is going to be full-blown. This is your new life. This is your new culture we're talking about, folks. This is not something that we do nilly-willy. This is our new life. Chapter 46. The Prince and the Feast. The Prince's Land and Sacred Kitchens. That whole chapter is about that, about the Prince. We believe that the Prince is Jesus. And kitchens are, are important. <laughs> Chapter 47. Life-giving river flows from the temple. And I got really interested in this. Life-giving river flows from the temple. The shining man shows him water flowing from underneath the temple threshold. So there's water flowing out of this temple. Now see, we've heard some of this through Daryl's teaching. Daryl did some of this teaching. He made him walk, wade across the shallow water, ankle deep. The water goes up to his knees. Another thousand cubits and the water's up to his waist. Another thousand cubits and it's over his head. A river no one could cross. It was a river no one could cross. The ankle, that represents our walk with Christ. Knee deep, life of prayer. Waist deep, what we give birth to. Fruit of the Spirit. Chapter 48, distribution of the land. So it sounds like he's going to be giving out land to people. The temple complex will stand in the center. The city of Jerusalem is given dimensions. Land for the other five tribes and finally the gates of Jerusalem. From that time on, the city will be called Yahweh Lives Here. That's the name of the new city, Yahweh Lives Here. That ends Ezekiel. We must live our lives as though we're going to be there. I'm one of these people that never believed that we would be alive when Jesus come back, but I've changed. I remember when we lived in Cambria and I was upstairs uh, getting laundry and the Lord spoke to me clears a bell, and he says, you will see me coming on a white horse. He told me that. And he's told me that another time. There's been another time he's told me, I think it was in Edwardsville, you will see me coming on a white horse. Now, I took him seriously, but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. You think, well, Am I going to be dead or alive when I see him come back? You know, am I going to be part of this culture or am I, will I have died and then, I don't know. Well, based on everything that we're studying, I think there's a real possibility we may be alive during this time. He has brought us here. He's given us birth, birthed us to live at a time when we are doing Matthew 17, 11. I know I said this last week, but I'll say it again. Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. He's calling us to have the anointing of Elijah to prepare this earth for Jesus' return. That's what the Moses and the Elijah company is. That's what the Nazarite mandate is, is to prepare people to be that, to have those anointings so that they can prepare the earth and the inhabitants of the earth for the return of Jesus. That's exactly why you have been trained and equipped. That's exactly why you got the mantles that you've got and everything else that God has given you is getting ready to give you a whole lot more is so that you will be the Elijahs to prepare this earth for Jesus' return. 
and you're going to make the decision whether you want to do that or not. You will make that decision whether you want to do that or not. I had no idea at that point when I was teaching on Elijah and he said, Verlinda, I want you to tell everybody they're Elijah. I had no idea that that's what this meant at that point. And of course, when we we're back there and the horrendous stuff and the Lord says, Verlinda, remember when I told you that everybody's Elijah? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, I'm calling them out. And I don't care if you're a man or a woman. I don't care how old you are. He doesn't care how old you are. He doesn't care what your abilities are or what they aren't. He wants to use you. And if you don't think you've got the ability to do it, he's going to give it to you to do it. I'm telling you right now, he will give it to you to do it. But he's examining your hearts to see where you are, to see if you want to move with him. I would love to sit there and tell you that there is not a price tag on it, but there is a price tag on it. There is a price tag. I got a prophetic word from somebody. They had no idea how accurate they were when they gave me this word. And they told me something that God had told me was going to happen, that I'm, that I'm going to do in the future. And he says, because God has told, has told you the price that you're going to have to pay for it. And it's, it's repeated twice in that word. Because God has told you the price that you're going to have to pay in order to do that. And, and, sh and they're right. They're right. There's a price tag on it. It's, it's not one of those uh, get out of jail free cards or anything. There's a price that all of you have paid a price already with your life. Every one of you have laid your life down for him. Every one of you have laid your life down for him. And God's got something for you to do. He's got an assignment, many assignments in the future. You may be ruling and reigning over some of this land or groups of people. I have no clue. We don't know yet, but that's going to happen. But you've been faithful and laid your lives down. He's got a plan for you. And I don't care how you feel physically. I don't care how you feel emotionally. He's going to take it and he's going to move with it. And I'm, I'm, I'm more sure of that than I am anything. Because when he said, I want you to start the Moses and Elijah company and he explained it to me, I understood what he was doing. He said, raise them up. Train them and raise them up. October 4, 5, and 6, we start. We start training. I don't know how many trainings we'll go through. They'll probably, as we, there'll be more new things he'll want to train us on, and we will learn, but he's given us assignments. The redigging the wells is an assignment for the Moses and the Elijah company and the Nazarites. That's an assignment, and he told me that. He said, this is your first assignment. He said, this is a thunder assignment. I said, okay. So it's, it's moving. It is in, it's, it's moving. Those are legitimate ministries. They have been, uh, they are recognized by the state of Illinois. This is not a figment of my imagination. Those are real ministries. And so we're going to launch that thing out in October. We're going to start training people. And I'll just be very honest with you. I'm looking at some of the trainers in the future. I'm looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting to be time where you're starting to get put in place and do what you do. I've said again, some of you will have your own ministry. Some of you will be ministers here, will help disciple or train people. Some of you may go out to other churches. I don't know. We don't know yet, but that's going to happen. We have been faithful at Eagle's Nest Watch. We have been faithful to train as he has told us to train. He has provided us with the people to do the training as we needed them. It's just incredible to me how he's done that. 
but you're getting ready to move into it. If you've got a physical situation that you're concerned about that you can't do it, he ain't going to heal you. If you've got financial concerns, he's going to fill your financial requirements. If you feel like you're not, I, I, how am I going to say this gracefully? That you haven't been trained or you haven't went to Bible school, don't worry about it. He's, he's going to take care of that as well. Whatever it is you need, he's going to fulfill because he's going to get this job done because he wants to come back and he's coming back. And we're a part of him coming back and establishing this, this kingdom. And we're going to do it. And I'm just thrilled that we're a part of it. <laughs> I never dreamed. I just never dreamed all this. Questions or concerns? Father, I thank you for everyone that's here, whether they're sitting here or whether they're watching. I will say this, that if you are watching this, then you've got an appointment because you had to make the decision to watch this, this teaching. And so uh, you've got an assignment as well. Those that are sitting here, you're definitely got your your card, you're, you're on the docket, you're there, and you're moving. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for each one that is here. Lord, minister to those that could not be here and prepare their hearts as well. Father, I thank you that you've chosen us to, to do this and to be a part of it. Lord, we lay our lives down to you more than we've ever laid them down before. Lead, guide, and direct us and train us on what we're supposed to be doing and in the future. Help us to understand. Father, I ask that you would send out extra angels over everyone that's involved here so that they will guard us and that they will help fight the battles that we're in because there will be some battles. We're getting ready to engage in a battle with Jezebel. We're going to learn about Jezebel now so we know how to fight her because the enemy is going to release a lot of Jezebels to come against the Elijahs. Well, we're not going to make the same choice that the first Elijah made. We're not going to fall into that trap. We're going to move forward in this, and we're going to complete our assignments. So, Father, I ask that you will give, that you will, this is, this is unique. Father, I thank you for the eyes of everyone here. And Father, I thank you that you're giving them a spiritual vision. They can see naturally, but that you're going to give them a spiritual vision that is going to go beyond what they have experienced in the past. That they will be able to see and understand where you are taking them. I seal that right now by the blood of Jesus. Folks, that's something that he's given you now. And don't be surprised when things start come falling in place for you and you understand some things that you've not understood in the past because that, that's what he's getting ready to do. He's given you a spiritual vision to understand what he's showing you. Father, I seal the destiny of everyone here. I seal every destiny of every Elijah called, every Moses, Elijah, or, or uh, Nazarite. I seal their destiny in you now in the name of Jesus. Father, help us to understand your temple coming. Help us to understand what part we play in this and help us to be faithful in it. Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Let your kingdom come on earth. How appropriate is that one? I've been praying this for decades. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In the sovereign name of King Jesus, I pray, amen. So we're getting ready. We'll be... Uh,
We're going to start in on Jezebel. He will not leave me alone with that because <laughs> there's, there's something else I'd like to do. But he, no, he says, you've got to train Jezebel now. He says, you've got to do it now. And I said, okay. He said, time's getting short now. And I said, okay. So I've got to dig in on Jezebel and get you ready so that you understand Jezebel. You understand what it looks like in church because there's a bunch of them in churches and that's a mess. And then you've got to understand how you deal with them, that that Jezebel doesn't destroy you or frustrate you to the point where you just walk away from your assignment because that's what she tries to do. We are a prophetic church and a prophetic people and I guarantee you right now, Jezebel will want to try and get you off the rail because of your prophetic anointing and your prophetic destiny. You are a very set-apart people, and I'm not trying to flatter you. I'm trying to help you understand how God sees you because he sees you like this. You are a very set-apart people. You can hear his voice. You can hear his heartbeat. And he, ha he needs you. And he's getting ready to set you in some places for assignments. And I'm doing everything I possibly can to protect you and to prepare you and to help you go there. I'm the president of your fan club. I really am. You're going to play a very big role. There's not very many people that's called to do this, this what we're in. So you're very precious. God loves you. <laughs> 